talking about the gym leaders that we picked. So, just to go over the rules we made for ourselves, obviously eight gym leaders. Yes. And we tried to mostly stick with teachers, uh, with one exception. We could have done Trelawney, but, but truthfully, neither of us are really a big fan of her. No, and she and doesn't really add much to the story, so we picked an aura mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. so we did deviate a little bit, mm -hmm. but most of them are teachers or former teachers. And, and yeah, so we gave them each a specialization as per usual. We had to get it creative with a couple of them, but we will explain why when we reach them and we tried to keep them with the levels that you would see so that dictates what level their Pokemon is mm -hmm. what you know what stage of evolution they're in so you know we can't have a fully evolved Pokemon usually with the first gym leader no. for example unless like you know a stones involved in that and you can do it whenever so that did heavily influence what Pokemon each trainer, gym leader, whatever, would have. We'd pick a line and then see where on that line they would, you know, be, depending upon the level. Mm -hmm. So our first gym leader is Pomona Sprout. She is the herbology teacher at Hogwarts and head of Hufflepuff House. And as I think would be obvious, we gave her the grass type. Mm-hmm. And we, since she's the first gym leader, we gave her three Pokemon. Yes. So her first Pokemon, her only fully evolved one, is a Sunflora. Because that uses a stone to evolve from the sun current. Mm-hmm. We picked Sunflora because it looks like a plant, and you know, herbology professor, so she works with plants. It's kind of an obvious one, we thought. Mm -hmm. And as we said in the previous video, we have those rules set up. Because none of the gym leaders are regular Pokemon trainers, they cannot have a starter Pokemon. And again, we're not doing any repeats of Pokemon, unless it's different forms. So, we gave Neville a lot of grass Pokemon in the last video, so Professor Sprout can't have any of them. Mm -hmm. So, our next Pokemon is Tangela. Now, Tangela is also a poison Pokemon, according to its Pokedex entry for Pokemon Heart Gold. The vines that cloak the entire body are always jiggling and they effectively unnerve its foes as well. And in the Harry Potter world, considering that this is magic, a lot of the plants, they're pretty unusual and some of them even do have poison effect effects to them. So and tentacles. And tentacles, so it seemed appropriate. Yeah. Um, since Fairy did bring up the poison type thing, we deviated a little bit from the norm in regards to what they typically give to gym leaders in these games. As long as the Pokemon has the type, whether it's its primary type or secondary type, we count it as okay for the gym leader to have. Mm -hmm. Just a heads up, because that will affect things later down the line. And for Professor Sprouts, getting back to that, uh, her last Pokemon is a Shroomish. And according to Shroomish's 
Pokedex entry for Alpha Sapphire. It truly senses danger. It shakes its body and scatters spores at the top of the of its head. This Pokemon spores are toxic. They make trees and weeds wilt. So another thing that you'd expect from it kind of a plant, like magic. a magical plant in the Harry Potter world. It sounds like magic. So, so yeah. So that's it for Professor Sprout. So moving on to our next gym leader, we have Phileas Flitwick. He is the Charms Professor and head of Ravenclaw House. So we gave him fighting Pokemon because he's actually a very skilled duelist. He's like a master duelist. So we thought fighting would be an interesting pick for him. So his first Pokemon is a Hollowja. Mm -hmm. Most the first reason we picked him was because Halucha is a bird and Ravenclaw's insignia is a bird, so it made sense. Mm -hmm. And Halucha is, according to its Pokemon Ultra Moon Pokedex entry, in combat Halucha leaps nimbly about taking advantage of its opponent's blind spots. It's also skilled at using superb submissive holds. And we should probably point out a lot of the fighting Pokemon we picked for Flitwick, each of them has a different style of fighting and specializes in certain techniques. Because as a master duelist, you'd think that he's got to know many different tactics, many different Dif techniques in dueling. Yeah, different ways to take down his opponent. So his second Pokemon is in Mainfu. Now we picked Mainfu because he's a tiny Pokemon and, and Flitwick is a small guy. Mm hmm But he packs a punch and so does Mainfu. So we we thought it was a good match. In mm -hmm. in fact, according to Mainfu's um Pokedex entry for Pokemon white they've mastered elegant combos and as they concentrate their battle moves become swifter and more precise so tiny pokemon but very fast and very good at what it does and flitwick's final pokemon is a heracross mm -hmm. now the heracross is a fighting slash bug type so he's a bit different than the other Pokemon Flitwick has. Mm -hmm. But the Heracross is actually very, very strong. In fact, a lot of its Pokedex entries said that with its horn alone, it can take down a giant tree, so... That'd be interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's a cool fighting type, and we wanted to give Flitwick a bit more of a variety, and it just seemed like a, a good match. Mm -hmm. So that's Flitwick's Pokemon. So that is gym number two. Mm -hmm. So moving on to gym number three. We have Severus Snape. Alright, so Snape fights with ground type Pokemon, and you're probably wondering why we didn't give him poison since he's a potions master. So, one reason for that is we gave poison to someone else, and Snape didn't want to be the potion master at Hogwarts. He wanted defense against the dark arts, so we thought we could branch him out a bit. And there was a uh, there were some ground types we really, really thought he meshed well with. Mm hmm So his first Pokemon is a Golette. 
Now, Golet is um, half ground, half ghost, and it's actually believed that it was made from clay. It's an ancient Pokemon, and that just seems like something a wizard would do, because... Well, they can make golems, and that's basically what Golette and its evolved form are. Mm -hmm. So it just it seemed like an interesting choice for Snake. Mm -hmm. His second Pokemon is a Trapinch. So according to Trapinch's uh, Sapphire Pokedex entry, Trapinch is a patient hunter. It digs an inescapable pit in a desert and waits for its prey to come tumbling down. This Pokemon can go a whole week without access to any water. So ignoring that last part, because I very much doubt Snake can do that. No, because he's just a he human. is He is a very patient guy. Mm-hmm. And he usually let, tries to just use what the people he doesn't like have done against them. He doesn't typically go out and make them do anything or target anything. He just lets them, even if it's not a big thing that they've done, he'll use that against them. Another little callback is also Trap Inch falls a lot because its head is much bigger than its body. Ooh. And it's very sad when you see that happen in the anime. But that's besides the point. And Snape was bullied heavily when he was in school, so I, I kind of saw a correlation there. Mm -hmm. So, Snape's third and final Pokemon is a Gliscor. Now this one we picked all for the aesthetics. Because it's a, it looks like a bat, and Snape himself, he kind of looks like a bat. He really does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because he's always wearing black, and he's got the cloak, and it's like... They look very similar, if you think about it. And it can glide around silently, and Snape can fly, because Voldemort taught him that. Mm-hmm. And Glyscor just really looks like a Pokemon Snape would have. Yeah, so those are all of Snape's Pokemon. So our fourth gym leader is Horus Slughorn, and we gave him the poison type. Now... Slughorn always was a potions professor. He definitely had a bigger interest in it, whereas Snape, like we said earlier, he didn't want to be a potions professor, so... For, for Slughorn, potions really is his passion. Mm -hmm. So it seemed more fitting. The, the poison type was a bit tricky, because poison is usually a secondary type linked more commonly with grass, and the Pokemon is always in the, well not always, but mostly, in that case, more obviously a grass Pokemon. And, you know, a few other Pokemon, like some water poison types, are like that too. So, we didn't have as big of a pool as normal with this one. So, and that also heavily impacted the Pokemon we picked. Mm -hmm. So, the first Pokemon is a Krogunk. Now, according to its Pokedex entry for Pokemon Heart Gold, fluid squeezed from its finger, a bleep poison is a significant ingredient in remedies for lower back pain. So, using poison as ingredients to make stuff. Seems like a potion to me. Yep. So that's Krogunk. His next Pokemon is the Alolan Grimer. Yeah, so we chose the Alolan Grimer over a normal Grimer because it looks more exotic and it's more beloved in its region. Mm -hmm. So we thought that would appeal more to Slughorn. Yeah. Not because of its passion for trash. And his final Pokemon is a Marini, which is a poison slash water type Pokemon. Now, Marini, like Dragon said, 
a lot of the poison types are mixed with another type because they're secondary types. And they look more obviously like their other type. Mm-hmm. But Marini, kind of like the Alolan Grimer with its coloring and everything, it just does look a lot more like an exotic Pokemon and it just seems like something that Slughorn would really like having on his team. So that's it for Gym Leader 4 and this is our last Gym Leader with three Pokemon. After this we'll have a few four Pokemon Gym Leaders. Mm -hmm. So our next Pokemon Gym Leader is Tonks. So Tonks is the, the gym leader who uses normal types. Now that might seem odd at first glance, but there's a reason, I promise. So her first Pokemon is a Ditto. Now this is an obvious reference into the fact that she's... Tonks is a metamorphmagus, which means she can change her appearance. appearance. <laughs> like her hair, her face, specific features, everything. And Ditto can do that too. He can take on the form of any Pokemon it wants. Unless, of course, he tries to do it specifically by memory, in which case Ditto's might mess up. Yeah. So, Tonks' second Pokemon is a Kecleon. Now, Kecleons can change their type, which we thought was another nice little reference to her shape-shifting abilities. Her third Pokemon is a cast form, and cast form's appearance is altered by the weather. It has four different forms, the normal one for sunny days, for rainy days, and for snowy days. Mm -hmm. Now, her fourth Pokemon, we get a bit creative with, is a... is a Zangoose. Now, this is more of a reference to her family because she is a black and a lot of her family members are Death Eaters. Like, Bellatrix Lestrange is her aunt. And while she's not a Death Eater herself, Narcissa Malfoy who is also Tonks' aunt, because Bellatrix and Narcissa are her mother's sisters. Narcissa is married to a Death Eater, and her son becomes a Death Eater, and while well, she never takes on the march, she's still loyal to Voldemort. Mm -hmm. and, and they're heavily associated with snakes, and Saviper is a snake, and Saviper and Zangoose have a rivalry. Because Mongoose, snake. So we just, we thought it would be a nice little throw in on how she's, she and her mother don't really subscribe to the same ideals that many of their blood relatives do. Mm-hmm. So those are Tonks Pokemon. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, they all have, well, except for Zangoose, they all have shape-shifting abilities. So, our next gym leader is Hagrid. Rubius Hagrid. So, now for Hagrid, we gave him ice type Pokemon. Yeah, because there's a lot of huge ones, and many of them have roots from like fables and mythical creatures. So, we thought that'd be a good fit for Hagrid. Mm -hmm. So, his first Pokemon is a mammal swine. Which looks like a mammoth. And you know, they're huge and they can be very gentle if they like you enough. Mm -hmm. So it just it seemed like a good fit with Hagrid. Next Pokemon is Frostlass. So this is the female version of Galele, basically. Mm -hmm. Cause they both evolved from Snow Runt, but only a female Snow Runt can become a Frostlass. They can also become a Galalee, but mm -hmm. females have the option, so. This is one of the Pokemon that takes its origins from a real world legend.
Um, according to Frostlass's Pokédex entry for Pokémon Moon, the soul of a woman lost on a snowy mountain possessed an icicle, becoming this Pokémon. The food it most relishes is the souls of men, and also according to its Ultra Sun entry to back this up, it says it only goes after men if it thinks they are handsome. And a lot of its other entries, particularly its Sun, Moon, and the Ultra versions of those, that it'll carry its prey back to its den and freeze them as decorations, or it'll come down to a town and if it knocks on your door, don't answer it. So, a lot of creepy stuff like that, and Hagrid had a tendency to think dangerous creatures were, like, the most awesome thing ever and would make great pets. He did. <laughs> so, this seemed like a Pokemon that he would really like. Mm -hmm. So, Hagrid's third Pokemon is an Aurorus. Yeah, so, but th so uh, this one is a fossil Pokemon. So like with many of the other ones, it is based on a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. So this Pokemon is another gentle giant, a lot like Mammoth Swine. <laughs> so something up Hagrid's alley. So Hagrid's fourth and final Pokemon is a Crab Vomitable. Mm -hmm. This one just looks odd and... And it's pretty dangerous, uh, according to its Pokedex entry for Pokemon Ultra Sun. It stores coldness in its pincers and pummels its foes. It can even smash thick, thick walls of ice to bits. So, another Pokemon I just think Hagrid would think would make an awesome pet, but it's like super dangerous and probably shouldn't be, but it's Hagrid, so he doesn't... Yeah, this one, it was a toss-up between Crab Abominable and Abomasnow, because Abomasnow kind of looks like Hagrid, but Crab Abominable just made me think of the Blast Ended Skewerts. Mm-hmm. That kind of sold it for me, anyway. So those are Hagrid's Ice Pokemon. So then we've got Jim, the seventh gym leader, and this time we are using Remus Lupin. We picked Remus Lupin because we saw him as the best dark defense against the dark arts teacher that Hogwarts had and during Harry's time there anyway. Yeah. And we picked the dark type because werewolf. Mm -hmm. It seemed to match. So his first Pokemon is a Mightyana. And that's, again, a reference to the werewolf thing, because, in my opinion anyway, Mightyena is the most outright wolf-like of all the different dog-like Pokemon. Mm -hmm. In fact, according to its Pokédex entry for Pokemon Ruby, Mightyena gives obvious signals when it's preparing to attack, it starts to growl deeply and then flatten its body, this Pokemon will bite savagely with its sharp pointed fangs. No. So that just seems like a wolf. Because werewolves, once they transform, they won't even recognize their own friends. As we've heard. And they'll only respond to the call of their own kind. So they are very savage. Yep. So Lupin's second Pokemon is a Houndoom. Mm -hmm. So Houndoom is based off of a hellhound, so it's still kind of it's still kind of a callback for the werewolf thing. Mm-hmm. And according to its Pokedex entry from Pokemon Silver, upon hearing its eerie howls, other Pokemon get the shivers and head straight back to their nests. So when there is a full moon Everyone flees from the werewolves. Mm-hmm. So his third Pokemon is a Weavile. Now, Weavile, according to its Pokédex entry for Pokémon Sun, they travel in groups of four or five, leaving signs for one another on trees or rocks. They bring down their prey with coordinated attacks. 
So that still kind of makes me think of a wolf, and furthermore, it just, Weavile looks like an interesting and cool Pokemon, and Lupin's focus when he was teaching was creatures. So Weavile just looks like something he could teach about. Mm-hmm. Because they're smart. Very smart. Weavile's are smart and pack-oriented, so if you're preparing to deal with them, you have to know what you're doing. Right. And Lupin's fourth and final Pokemon is a Spiritomb. Now, according to Spiritune's entry from Pokemon Platinum, it con its constant mischief and misdeeds resulted in it being bound to an old, key an odd keystone by a mysterious spell. And the mischief thing to me just is kind of a callback to when he was younger and at school, and he would get cause all sorts of mischief with Harry's father, James, Sirius, and Peter Pettigrew. And if you know what the Marauders map is, they call themselves Messers, Mooney, Padfoot, Prongs, and Wormtail. Not in that order, but... Yep, yeah, and, um, Spiritomb, it's commonly believed, is made up of the souls of, like, thousands of the departed. And because there's so many personalities in there, they're kind of constantly at war. Mm -hmm. So it so what one part of the spirit tomb wants isn't always in control of what the body, for lack of a better term, is doing, which is kind of a callback to how Lupin is unfortunately not always in control of his actions. Mm -hmm. So that's it for Lupin. So now moving on to our eighth and final gym leader, we have Minerva McGonagall. Alright, so for McGonagall, we gave her psychic type Pokemon. Because they're heavily associated with smartness, and McGonagall is very smart. She is. McGonagall's first Pokemon is Gardevoir. Now, Gardevoir, according to its Pokedex entry for Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, has the psychokinetic power to distort the, distort the dimensions and create a small black hole. This Pokemon will try to protect its trainer even if it, risk it risks its own life. So, McGonagall is very, very protective of Hogwarts students as a whole. So that kind of fits that, and... Another reason Psychic fits her is she, you know, does... What's the...? Transfiguration. That's it. She, do, she teaches Transfiguration, and... That seems like something a Psychic type could potentially do. Mm -hmm. So... Gardevoir is just a powerful psychic type, and we thought it fit McGonagall, and, like, they both have, like, an elegance to them. Mm-hmm. Because Professor McGonagall, while she's very stern, she does also exude this sort of elegance. So, her second Pokemon is a Gallade, who is essentially the male version of Gardevoir. Mm -hmm. And Gallade, according to... It's Pokedex entry for Pokemon Black and White. When protecting someone, it extends its elbows as if they were swords and fights savagely. Now, as we... It's got a knight motif to it. Mm -hmm. And for ever, whatever reason, that just makes me think of in the movie when she sent the statues out to protect oh, Hogwarts. She was so excited about that. It was so funny. She's like to Molly Weasley, I've always wanted to use that spell. And Molly Weasley just gives her... This bewildered look, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's kind of, it made us think of that. So, her third Pokemon is a Meowzic. Now, Professor McGonagall is an Animagus. She can transform into a cat. And I'm pretty sure cat's also her Patronus. Mm -hmm. So, if you really wanted to be specific, because the males and the females look different in their coloring and a bit in their body shape, 
we if we had to pick, we'd probably go for male because it's darker in color, and McGonagall always wears dark colors. And she's a black and gray tabby, so she, her cat form is a of darker colors. The Yasics are, as you can see on the screen, navy blue and white, with the female being primarily white, with some navy blue highlights, and the male being the opposite. So if we had to pick, we'd probably go with the male. But either one really works. Mm -hmm. So for her next Pokemon, we chose the tail. <laughs> now, it, they do bear a, a pretty strong resemblance. So that was part of it. Mm -hmm. Now, an interesting thing about Got the Tail, it, according to its Pokedex entries from Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, it can see the future in from the movement of the stars, and when it learns its trainer's lifespan, it cries in sadness. And I think that just kind of goes back to McGonagall's protectiveness of the Hogwarts students because if something were out to ever happen to her students or when something does happen to her students, she you always see her there. Like when Ron got poisoned or ever when something happens to Harry because she really does care about the students despite yeah. her stern demeanor. Uh-huh. And her final Pokemon, because unlike all the other gym leaders, most 8th gym leaders have 5 Pokemon, is a Starmie. Now, Starmie is just another... It is a water Pokemon, but it's also a psychic Pokemon. So, well, part of it, I think, is also... It's got all the points, which makes me think of McGonagall's hat. And I know that's pretty weak, but they're deceptively powerful. Like, they don't look like much, mm -hmm. but they can pack a punch, and McGonagall's the same way. You look at her, and you see a frail, older lady. But she's powerful. I mean, look how she took on Snape in the last I movie. I know! It was, um, she, in the book, she, along with a couple other teachers, is battling Voldemort for a while. So, yeah, so deceptively powerful. You, you know, the whole, you can't judge a book by its cover thing. So that's it for McGonagall, and by extension, we're done with the gym later, so this video is now finished. So, in the next video, we will be discussing the Elite Four, the champion, champion and the evil team who we are calling Team Death Eater. For obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. So, we hope you liked our picks for the gym leaders and what type they would specialize in. If you guys had any other opinions or suggestions, leave it down below in the comments. We'd really like to know what you think. And I also set up various social media for us, so be sure to check it out on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. It shouldn't be hard to find. We, it's we share our name on everything for this. So if you have the chance, we'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And we'll see you at our next video. Bye, Bye. guys.